Dugong is notorious for being bad, but since it's back with a DLC, you know I've got to give it a try. It's got all around mediocre stats, but playing into its base 80 defense and 95 special defense is its best bet. Whirlpool is a 35 power water move that traps the opponent in for 4 to 5 turns. We can pair this with Parish Song, which faints all Pokemon hearing it in 3 turns. With the opponent unable to switch due to the Whirlpool, they're essentially stuck in a spin cycle listening to our Song of Death. Dugong also has the ability Hydration, which cures any status condition if it's raining, and if we use Rain Dance, we can combine that with Rest, we can heal ourselves to full and hydrate off the sleep to be extra annoying. All we gotta do is switch out on the final Paris turn, and we took them on an evil ride. And while Dugong isn't great, it can definitely have an impact on a game. So look, Dugong is incredibly mid. So what do I do with it? Bring it against some of the biggest threats in the entire game, just because, why not? If you're into that kind of thing, consider hitting that subscribe button, it's free, it only takes you a second, and you can save a dugong's life. Also, I want to give a shout out to my boy Envy, who did recently feature this set. Let's get into the match. So like I said, my opponent is working with some extremely scary threats, and this little dolphin here is no exception. They lead off with a palafin, and while it's not at its maximum form yet, it's probably just going to switch out of here. As I lead with the Gastrodon, it actually puts some good pressure on this Mon because of, you know, the fact that I just take a Storm Drain if they want to go for a Water Attack. So, I'm going to take this opportunity just to set up my Stealth Rock here as they switch into Meowskarada, my natural enemy, and I get the rocks up for free, which is nice. However, I find myself in a spot where, of course, I don't want to take a Flower Trick. I'm actually running the Rindo Berry on the Gastrodon, which reduces Grass Damage, but if I can avoid it, I'm going to probably, probably try to save that for later. So... I decided to switch this thing out just because I do want to conserve it for that Palafin. And I'm just going to go right into the Meganium. Meg comes in thinking, damn, what a nice little day. And then boom, a U-turn hits you and life comes at you quick. The U-turn uh, with, uh, with the stab there is going to do around half and I'm actually defensive. So that shit hurts and Meganium is overall not great in this matchup. Not good in general, but in this matchup especially, probably not going to be able to pull off too much. As now they just get a nice little pivot into the Flutter Main and it's pretty much like... It's just threat after threat, and I do not have, you know, a lot that wants to deal with this, or at least switch into it. So, I decided to just stay in, just kind of see what this thing wants to do. Turns out they're just going to throw some fire at me, and down goes Meganium to the critical hit that absolutely mattered. Meganium would have swept the entire team if it wasn't for the crit. I'm pissed off, and now I'm just going to go into this Noki Dogi. So, Aloma Ninetales is one thing that can at least try to dampen the damage here. I, I, I kind of need this thing on the team. I come in, I can set up the snow, which is great because that allows me to Aurora Veil. And I know that I can take one Mystical Fire. Turns out, barely, because it actually knocks me down to 2 HP, which tells me this thing is in fact running the Choice Spec. So I knew that I could take one of them, uh, but Choice Specs, he puts it on a roll and I do live it with 2 HP. Allows me to set up the Aurora Veil and that was actually pretty damn spooky. So I actually, I opt to not switch out here. They're going to finish me off with another Mystical Fire, but I did get up my Aurora Veil going to last me the eight turns with the Light Clay. And I'm like, okay, it's time to get something going because now I'm just basically playing a four versus six here. So I take this opportunity to switch into the greatest Pokemon ever. They just straight up threw an inch and a half horn on a Dugong and called it a Pokemon. And I'm here for it. So listen, I'm going to go for the Whirlpool. I know that I can take Mystical Fires all day, especially... Uh, with that, uh, the Aurora Veil up. I go for the Whirlpool. I want to trap this thing in here. But then immediately as I do that, I realize there's actually one mechanic that I always forget about. And that is the fact that you cannot, in fact, trap ghost types. For whatever reason, the little ghostly boys are not into being trapped. So I go for the Whirlpool. Um, it was worth it just to kind of consider if they were going to end up switching out here. But at this point, I'm just going to click the Parish Song and just try to try to get some, some Death Songs going here. They do end up switching because, of course... That thing is, in fact, not locked in here. And now they decide to go into uh, the Corviknight. So, listen, this is another Pokemon that my team does not handle well. I, I really do not have a lot of answers. But what I do have is one beautiful Dugong. So I go for that Parish Song. And it, it puts me in a little bit of a spot here. So all Pokemon hearing the move will faint in three turns. Now, ordinarily, I like to try to get the Whirlpool off initially and then go for the Parish Song. It kind of just it puts me at a better stagger. Uh, but at this point, the, the Parasong goes first, and now I obviously want to lock his ass in. I go for that Whirlpool and give him a little spin -a and now you're stuck, buddy. You're, you're stuck, forced listening to my crazy song, and they decide to go for the Iron Defense. A lot of the time, Corviknight's going to be running you know, the Iron Defense with the Body Press, 
And that's actually, you know, it's a little bit painful for me because of course I'm uh, the ice type, but being in snow, I actually do have a nice little defense boost from that being up. Thank you, Gen 9, for buffing the ice type a little bit with that. Um, the Paris count is going to fall to two, and you'll see what I mean by being in kind of an awkward stagger here because at this point, all I can really do is go for the Rain Dance. Now, this set is working with Rain Dance because of my ability Hydration. It pairs super nicely with Rest. Now, if I get knocked down low, in the rain, I can go for Rest, and my Hydration ability actually wakes me up immediately. So... They go for that body press there, knocks me down to around half, doesn't really matter. But the important thing is, we actually have one more turn until I, my mixtape is going to kill us all. That's how bad Dugong's music is, just straight up kills you. So, the count falls to one. Now, ordinarily, if I was able to Whirlpool first and then go for the, uh, the Paris song, I would be able to rest, get back to full, wake up with the hydration. But now, I'm actually forced to switch out here. They, unfortunately, cannot switch themselves out because, you know, Dugong, Dugong still being there with that Whirlpool. So, I decide to go into the Gastrodon, knowing that I can take a Body Press here, no problem. The Parish Song falls to zero, and the Corviknight is going to be taken care of. So, Dugong absolutely murdering the, one of the scariest birds in the game, and we love to see it. I, I, again, I didn't have any answers for that, so Dugong kind of needed to come in clutch there. So, they now get a free switch, and of course, they're going to go into the Meowskarada. They want to catch me with that flower trick, but I'm not letting it happen here. Uh, I'm going to end up going into the Hitmon top. So, I'm working with an Intimidate set here because I can switch in relatively nicely, dampen this thing a little bit, and also look pretty badass jamming in my pink little onesie here. So, uh, they actually decide to go for the knockoff rather than the flower trick, expecting the switch like I did last time. Uh, they turn themselves into the dark type, which actually ends up working out for me. Now, I take that nicely because of the Aurora Veil boost plus the resistance, but now... I'm expecting, okay, they likely switch into the Golden Go that they have in the back. So I actually click Earthquake. However, they in fact stay in. They end up going for the Flower Trick uh, after Intimidate. It knocks me down to around half, and I do a nice little chunk with that Earthquake. But then I'm like, okay, no more playing games. I'm Mach Punch him. Take care of that Meowskarada. And that's actually great. That thing being gone, they lose a lot of speed on their team, but also uh, they lose a direct answer to the Gastrodon. So now we're kind of free on the Slug. And all I had to pay was a little bit, a little bit of damage on the hip on top, which is totally fine. So now they get a switch, and they decide to go into the Garchomp. Now, ordinarily, I'm actually running Triple Axle on hip on top. Sadly, I do not have it on this set, so I figure I don't have a lot that wants to switch in here, and I know this thing wants to set up. I, this Garchomp just smells like setup, and uh, you guys got to put some damn deodorant on. He goes for that Swords Dance. I hit him with a close combat, which doesn't quite do a lot of damage, but it does some nice chip to where I'm feeling like, okay, I can probably deal with this thing here. I do touch him, get hit by the rough skin, which is fine, and I'm thinking, okay, maybe a mock punch knocks this thing out if I was technician. Sadly, I'm intimidate, so the mock punch not quite going to be able to do it. I just hit his sandpaper ass skin once again, and they are going to finish me with the scale shot. So now this thing is incredibly spooky. It has both a sword stance and a speed boost from the scale shot and uh, it does not have a life orb, so it's not actually going to end up knocking itself out. And I need to figure out an answer immediately because I'm <laughs> running low on options here, but when you have the dugong, there is still hope. Now here's the reason. I go into the dugong here. Uh, of course, with this thing being Swords Dance, I am max defensive, but I'm not going to be defensive enough to take an attack. But what I can do is go for the Terra Fairy. Now, that's going to make it so if they do decide to go for that scale shot, I can obviously, it's not going to affect me. But then my only attacking move is Whirlpool here. And that puts me in an, a unique position where, of course, I'm an ice type that can demolish this Garchomp, except my only damage immediately is going to be the Whirlpool. So I put the heart on my head looking adorable. They do, in fact, commit the scale shot. Does not affect me, which is amazing. And now all I have to do is go for that Whirlpool. I land the 85 accurate move. And while it doesn't knock it out right away, we give him the old second spin cycle here in a moment when the turn is over, and that should be able to take care of it. So, after a little bit of leftover recovery, we are going to take the Garchomp back to the water park, spin him around once more, and it barely is enough to knock this thing out. And the Dugong just killed the Garchomp in like the most unconventional way, and I am here for it. So we're at two kills with the Dugong, feeling pretty good. But you know what we're not feeling good about is this damn superhero ass dolphin with his crazy glove i don't know this thing is an absolute menace and i do not have a lot of options so what i decide to do here is just click the whirlpool I, I figure i can likely take one attack from this thing and they actually can't go for a water stab move because of the fact that gastrodon is around so they decide to go for the ice punch and actually end up getting the freeze which is incredibly unfortunate because it looked like i was gonna be able to take two of those um and i mean unless they actually switched over 
you know, to a water move. But they freeze me, turn my ass into a heart-shaped popsicle, and Dugong being frozen is just kind of poetic. So that is wildly unfortunate, but now at least I'm going to go ahead and make a switch. I decide they're probably going to commit the water move to just grab the knockout here so I can switch into Gastrodon. But instead, they have a different idea, and they're actually going to pivot into their Golden Go, which, you know, we have not seen this thing yet. Comes in, takes a little bit of that Stealth Rock, but it also tells me it is floating in the air with the Air Balloon, which is actually quite unfortunate because that means now I have to attack it before I can get an Earthquake off. But at least I make a nice pivot, and Gastrodon still has the matchup here. Um, we were expecting to come in and soak up some water, but hey, now we got the Cinnamon Toast Crunch or Applejacks guy looking at us, telling us Cinnamon's the fucking Winamon, and I... I'm even more afraid because it actually goes for the nasty plot. Now, of course, I fire off the Surf. It's going to do some chip and also pop the Air Balloon to where now an Earthquake should finish it off. And it kind of comes down to if I can take the Shadow Ball, which they fire off the plus two Shadow Ball. I am specially defensive as hell, so the Slug is able to clutch it out and fire off the Earthquake. That takes care of the Golden Go, and that actually worked out perfectly. So, they are now down to two final Pokemon. It is going to be the Palafin along with the Fluttermane, and those two combined have like a higher base stat total than like my entire damn team. But they go into this thing where they're going to be kind of forced. I, I feel like this thing is probably choice banned. I haven't really been able to tell at this point, but they can't go for the water move here. They have to finish me off with the Ice Punch. Sadly, I did have to take too much damage there on the Gastrodon, but this is actually going to open the door for a potential, a potential clutch by young Pablo over here. We bring in Pablo Ice Kabar. He comes in with his crazy ass ice cube head and I have a plan here so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to commit the substitute if I can either catch a switch or they have to stay in and if they're banded ice punch it's gonna just break my ice head but uh, they actually end up switching now they go into the flutter main who has taken some considerable chip at this point to where it is likely in range for the ice crash to knock it out even with without the belly drum so ice cube is a super unique and kind of confusing Pokemon but here's how this thing works now I'm behind the substitute, so I have to go for the Ice Icicle Crash. Ordinarily, I would love to click Belly Drum at this point. It would then knock me down to my Salic Berry. However, they end up going for that Mystical Fire, gonna knock out the sub as I just end up uh, going for this Ice Icicle Crash. Now, my win condition at this point would have been clicking the Belly Drum, but until my Ice Icicle Head or Ice Cube Head is knocked off, I don't get my base 130 speed. Currently, with this heavy ass Ice Cube on my head, I only have 50 speed. And if I would have committed the Belly Drum, they would have knocked out the sub, I would have got my Salic Berry, but it would not have been enough to outspeed a, a, a damn Flutter main. So, I end up knocking that thing out, and now we have to deal with Palafin, where without the Belly Drum, I'm not going to have too much damage with the Zen Headbutt, but at least this thing having to hit me with a physical attack means that uh, I can at least kind of soak up at least one attack. Kind of similar to Mimikyu, in that I don't take any damage from their first attack until they knock my head off. So... They're actually going to end up committing the Terra Water here, which obviously without my Gastrodon, they're free to click the Jet Punch. That is going to be a priority move, and that is the entire reason why normally I could also click the Belly Drum here. You know, taking the attack doesn't do any damage. I can then Belly Drum, um, but with the priority, I would be faster than it, but obviously not faster than the, than the Jet Punch. So all I can really do is go for the Zen Headbutt. Um, at this point, I am, again, extremely fast, but with that priority, they're probably going to be running Choice Band here. With that Terra Water banded extra stab jet punch, that's obviously going to knock me out because I lose some defense without my Ice Cube head. And now my final Pokemon in the most poetic fashion is going to be my Frozen Dugong. So I bring in Dasani, the most mid-water of all time, and... All I can really do here is uh, try to clutch this shit out with the Whirlpool, however, you know, a Jet Punch is going to come through. I'm no longer going to be able to resist that, and that is going to knock me out. So, that is going to be the end of the game. We are going to take the L there. However, that was extremely close, and I almost had a position. I probably made some misplays, um, but in the long run, this team was absolutely wild, and a Dugong Meganium team was this damn close. So, still regardless, a super fun match, and, you know, just for fun out here. But thank you guys very much for watching. I really do appreciate all the support on these videos. Make sure to leave a comment if you do enjoy. I like to read them all, and I'll catch you guys next time. Peace out.